remember in school that one kid that smart guy or let's say the over smart guy or girl the kid who always raised his or her hand for every question who always volunteered to help the teacher who loved to be the class leader who wanted every time to be chosen first for good behavior or for anything yep that's the one every class had one every job often has one throughout life you'll always encounter those who crave special attention who obsess over being first at everything who seem to need extra pets and perks to feel they are okay while they can annoy the people around them with their incessant striving most folks are content to let them achieve or strive to their heart's content as long as it does not take away from their own career trajectory we have today two of jesus' disciples who why for what they see as power seats in jesus' kingdom james and john the two sons of the fishing mogul zebedee come right out and ask jesus for right and left seats to jesus when he ascends his throne of glory they are the honor seats to a king the most prominent advisors to the king in a kingdom of course james and john still at this point are assuming that jesus will become an earthly king of israel they no doubt anticipate whether in this life or the next that he will wield significant power and they want to be the messiah's first hand men the prime ministers of piety the master pets jesus is at first taken aback by their impetuous and somewhat impertinent request but these are the sons of zebedee he knows them they are not known for their deliberating slow moving style they are used to a high powered fishing industry where they barter and compete for the best positions deals boats and fees they are behaving in this character but jesus also realizes immediately that they have absolutely no clue what they are asking for they are making their request out of zeal to be first in line for the holy awards so jesus exclaims you do not know what you are asking then he continues can you also drink the cup i drink or receive the baptism i receive we can they answer a little too quickly actually a lot too quickly because what is jesus inferring he knows they still don't understand what his mission actually is that he will need to suffer and die at the hands of his own contemporaries and colleagues that whoever follows him will no doubt suffer too as they carry out his mission that following jesus in that time and place could mean and probably would mean certain painful death the disciples zeal for the mission in the current time is keeping them from understanding what will follow for them if they truly choose this path for true discipleship the true path of following jesus includes the path to the cross persecution and likely torture and martyrdom jesus is not trying to discourage them from following him quite the contrary jesus wants worthy eager passionate disciples but he needs them to understand what they are taking on discipleship is not just a perk or favor but a commitment to do what it takes to expand the gospel through thick and thin good and bad easy and difficult it can be a light or heavy load once you make the commitment you can't go back on your word in fact in the end there are no guarantees otherwise it would not be faith so jesus tells them you will drink the cup i drink and receive the baptism i receive but to sit at my right or left hand isn't mine to give it belongs to those for whom it has been prepared by now all of the disciples are riled up angry at the few trying to one up them for the seats of honor in the coming kingdom So once again Jesus enters into a teaching moment telling them you know that the ones who are considered the rulers by the gentiles show off their authority over them and their high ranking officials order them around but that's not the way it will be with you 
whoever wants to be great among you will be your servant whoever wants to be first among you will be the slave of all for the human one did not come to be served but rather to serve and to give his life to liberate many people you cannot get any more direct than that you see jesus's kingdom whether earthly or heavenly is not patterned after the usual hierarchical kingdoms and structure his disciples were used to seeing or had heard about from the past jesus's kingdom was of an entirely different nature not only did it require long hard consideration of the risks and what the commitment would entail but it would also require those who want to lead to become service driven in nature being jesus's disciple wouldn't be about who would be in a leadership position who would run the show it would be about who would serve everyone else the most who would show the most humility who would put themselves last and put others first who would dedicate their lives to doing things for others who would sacrifice their own seat of honor to someone else parable after parable jesus keeps trying to enforce and teach this particular principle to his disciples even up to the last time he spends with them in an upper room when he gets down on the floor with the cloth and washes his disciples feet this is one of the hardest lessons for jesus' disciples to learn and it still is hard for us today but i want you to think for a moment about the people whom you have long admired whether still alive today or who have passed on those people whom you would name as true christian what were they like what made you feel they were so good at heart what was their nature what characteristic did they possess it's likely that you'll name some of the following humility servanthood patience grace kindness non-judging loving helping these are people who touch your hearts just by being themselves they are people you admire not for their status or their positions of power but for their lack of the need of it and likely they are people who have taken their faith seriously they live it out daily they know what it entails they keep god close to their hearts they walk their faith no matter what the cost impetuous faith or committed faith That is the question that Jesus asks every one of us as disciples of the way. Are you agreeing to be Jesus' disciples simply because you were raised to do so, because it's the thing you say in church, or because you thrive on your position, or so you can hang out with your friends? Or are you committing to be Jesus' disciples because you know the costs, but are willing to take the risk and walk the talk of proclamation and love service and mission these are difficult decisions for all of us and they require us to ask ourselves that question each and every day discipleship may be hard but jesus will walk with you in it every step of the way the first will be last and the last will be first when you strive don't strive to be first but commit to being faithful and Jesus will do the rest may Jesus Christ be praised